Welcome to Bucharest. I'm not going to ask you how you feel in Romania because I know you just arrived, but I will ask you about your precious luggage, which is your instrument. Who made it, when, and how would you describe the sound of it? Well, um, I actually own four different instruments. And uh, two of them are old instruments and two, the other two are modern instruments. And by chance now, I have with me a very, very new instrument. It was made only, uh, it was finished three months ago, and I love it very much because it sounds beautifully. It has a very big sound and uh, makes me feel very comfortable when I play. So, so uh, it's still in a trial time for me. It's actually the first time I will play with orchestra with this instrument. Uh, up to now, I had only played recitals. So, um, it was made by an Italian man from Brescia. Uh, called Filippo Fasser, and it is, in my opinion, a very good instrument, very beautiful instrument, and I'm very happy to be able to play this concert on it. I must confess, the cello is my favorite instrument, because you cannot play it without passion. Even when you press the strings or the bow, you have to have physical force, even. Mm -hmm. um, and the sound is really close to the human nature, but yet I don't play it. So why did you choose this instrument? I didn't. It was the decision of my father when I was still a, a boy. Uh, my father was a musician himself, he played French horn. And it was a dream of his that all his children should play uh, string uh, instruments, you know. Because he always felt like that in, in our country, in Brazil, uh, um, there was not enough uh, uh, musicians playing string instruments, violins, violas and cellos, to fill up the orchestras. So uh, I have four brothers, they all play uh, string instruments, three violinists and a cellist, and uh, they all play in the same orchestra where my, play, my, my father used to, to play. So partially his dream was fulfilled. But why does it appeal you? Because it has to, it's your life, you dedicate your life yes. to this instrument. What is, what's special about it for you? Well, you, you see, uh, you start as a child, but you develop uh, a love for one thing that is very, wonderful actually, which is music. The fact that it is the cello is happened more by chance, more by, you know, that's the way it is. It could have been also the violin or the, or the, the piano or I could have been a singer. Uh, I don't know if I would have been a good musician on those other instruments, but uh, that's how it is. It's not the instrument itself that is important. As the word says, it's just an instrument. It's just something that you use to produce music, to, to make beautiful music that uh, uh, in a way will uh, touch uh, your public. This night you will be surrounded by sirs. You have Sir Edgar, you have Sir Neville Mariner, you mm -hmm. have ladies and gentlemen, English ladies and gentlemen mm -hmm. in the orchestra, and mm -hmm. then you come with your Latin blood, Brazilian. How do you think this march is going to be? Actually, uh, it's very interesting because um, although I, I, I was born in Brazil, I live in Europe already. Uh, more than, my God, it's more than 40 years already by now. So um, I learned to be European as well. I still have a, a, a part of what you say in my blood of the uh, Latin uh, um, blood, but I think I could adjust very well to, to the life in Europe and to the culture and to the way of thinking. And uh, uh, that's why I don't think there is going to be much of a difference in, in approach to the music of uh, Elga, uh, but uh, perhaps a few people will notice it. I don't know. You know, it, it is something that I cannot judge. Tell me a bit more about the um, collaboration with Mr. Nevin Mariner, because he's a legend already. Yes, that's true. Well, uh, uh, to tell the truth, I only met him for the first time yesterday <laughs> at our first rehearsal. It is my first collaboration with him and uh, I'm very happy about it because, as you said, he is a legend, he is uh, one of the great and uh, whoever uh, reaches his uh, age and, and uh, uh, is capable of great, making great music the way he has been doing it uh, uh, his whole life uh, merits lots of respect. And that's how uh, my approach to him was also, you know, like uh, with respect and with uh, wanting to learn from him. 
Yeah. This concert was written after the World War One yeah. and after a period of illness in Elgar's life. I sense a lot of pain and drama in this music, particularly in the first and the last mu movement. Yes. Is that true? Actually, it begins and it ends with the same musical phrase. Yeah. yeah. Well, you're right about this. I'm sure that uh, what happened uh, in Europe at that time influenced uh, Elga, and there, there are shades of it in, in, in the music. One cannot uh, uh, always say that uh, it represents exactly what happened, but uh, a composer li li like him was surely a very sensitive man. I could not write a piece without uh, uh, feeling that and, and uh, uh, somehow representing what uh, happened in Europe. Is this concert spectacular? Uh, because it challenges the cello players so much. You have low notes and then, uh, I don't know, uh, beautiful melodies and uh, difficult chords, but also very fast and uh, high passages. Is that why it is so loved by the public? Uh, I think, I think it, it is a combination of all you said, but um, uh, he used the instrument so well. Um, the instrument in his writing sings. You know, very often I have the feeling that uh, uh, what he's trying to, to, to make the cello do is really sing, especially, as you said, in the first and the, in the last movement. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, um, uh, he has some, some uh, more uh, virtuoso passage, passages, but it's not necessarily written for the virtuosity to show off what the uh, uh, um, Cheris is able to do, but to express certain feelings as well, even in the most virtuoso moments. Every piece has a soul which cannot be written in the scores. Is it difficult to sense it and then to bring it to life every time you play it? Well, every, it's, it's true, every piece wants to say something, has a message to give, and, and that is the, the um, uh, challenge for us uh, musicians to find out what that is and, and try to convey that message, which is uh, uh, pure uh, uh, emotions and expression to the, to the uh, public. If you are able to find out what that is and, and find your own way also of doing it, that's of course the best way. Which anchor you think it will be nice to play after this concert? Well, I usually play uh, uh, a movement of uh, a suite by, by Bach. You okay. know, that's what I really like to play after uh, 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 any, almost every uh, concerto that I play. And uh, uh, I feel it, it works very well because it, it, it gives a certain moment of meditation after all the uh, passion of uh, a, a romantic concerto like, like the Elgo or Dvorak, for instance. Yeah, exactly what I wanted to say is that you will play this really romantic instrument yeah. and this romantic music. The mm -hmm. whole is exquisite and it's all before midnight. Mm -hmm. Do you have expectations from the audience from, from this concert? Well, I think they have expectations from me. <laughs> no, they have to expect something from me that I give them something that they can bring home and cherish, you know. Uh, uh, my expectation from the public is simply that they that I achieve that that they that they like it what I do. Yeah, and the atmosphere is great. That I, can I know do. that too. It's a it's a beautiful hall, and and the the, the audience is, is knowledgeable. It's an yeah. audience that uh, really uh, likes music. So so I always look forward to playing here. Yeah, thank you so much. Mm -hmm.